They finally updated them. The new Astro A50X. Buckle up, because we got a lot to talk about. Now, I want to show you the box real quick, just because a lot of these things will stand out as key points, even though a box is a box, right? But number one, looking down here, compatible with Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and mobile. Well, it is also compatible with the Nintendo Switch, but only via HDMI, which you'll catch during the setup. But again, you can use it across every single platform, and I tested across all of them. Yes, you do have Bluetooth, you have your graphene drivers, of course it's wireless. When you flip it over, you can see a whole lot more of those goodies. And we're going to take a deep dive into all of this. And now there's one thing I want to mention that I spotted on social more than I thought I would. People saying Logitech copied Astro. Well, if y'all didn't know, Logitech owns Astro, and it's been that way for a very long time. So no, they didn't copy them, they're just now putting their name on the box. And as far as inside your box, this is everything you're gonna get. And I know looking at it, it can be a little overwhelming. Number one, you have your headset over here, which by the way, you can get this in a black or a white version here. You have your base station with all your ports for connection, which we're gonna go over all that, and all this is gonna be very simple by the end of this video. Over here is your power plug, and as you see, you have one of those where you can slap in whichever regional type of plug you need. Bam, slides right down there to change it. It's got this little depressed button, and it'll slide right out there. You have your detachable USB-A to C, and then over here you have your PC cables, which are red, and then over here it says PC and power right on it. And again, just side note, as you can see, it's color coded on the back and tells us what goes where. So as confusing and cluttered as this can look, which it's not even included in everything you need. Again, we're gonna talk about all this. It is very easy once you get into it. And the little quick start guide here is fairly simple to follow as well, telling you what goes into where as far as ports for each console. So you know what? Let me mix my video up a little bit different than I usually do my gaming headset video. You all know I usually dive right into comfort, but I want to talk about connecting this and using it across some, because again, I just want to ease us a little bit here, right? When I took it out, I'm like, oh geez, this is going to be a headache. So I want to pull the base station up here for you. And as you see, you got your different ports on the back right there. Xbox, PlayStation, PC, HDMI out. And then over here, again, you got your PC cables, your basic USB, and then your power. Because yes, you power this and that's how you can charge your headset, even whenever your console's off or your PC's off, you always have power running to the wall here, which will always charge it. So look on the back here. This is just like whenever you hook up your Xbox or PlayStation, something like that, it tells you, again, HDMI out. So that's going to be what's going to your TV. Okay, so pretty much what you're going to do is take that HDMI from your console, plug it into here, saying you're on Xbox. That's going, bam, right into here. And then you need another HDMI. And that's one other thing I wish that would have included was another HDMI. Now this is going to, it's like a pass-through. So it is a pass-through. It's not like a pass-through. And you get the 120 hertz through this as well. But again, I wish they would have included that extra HDMI because some people might mix it up. Say, oh, I got an HDMI in the closet and it's not a 120 hertz one. And then you're going to lose that if you have a TV that does that. So make sure you get, again, a high-speed HDMI cable. Most of the 8K ones these days, they're still fairly cheap, and they all do 120 or more. And again, that is what's going to come out here into your TV. So again, even as cluttered and confusing as it can be, it's very simple. Again, you take that HDMI from your TV that's from your console right now, plug it into whichever ports you're using for which console, get yourself another HDMI, just make sure it's 120, that high-speed 4K one, and then plug that into there and then into your TV. That's exactly what this is, is an HDMI pass-through. And yes, you can run them all at the same time and simply switch them over if you want just by a press right on the back of the headset. We'll talk more about that and features and functions. So why I wanted to kick it off right there is so the setup is not discouraging you. It's not like, man, I don't really want to mess with all that. It is fairly simple and once you set it up, you're honestly done across all your platforms. Now let's go ahead and dive into the headset, kicking it off with comfort here. And I'm going to kick it off, slapping it on a scale. We're getting 362 grams. It's not ridiculously heavy here. And shockingly, when you put the older A50s on, they're coming at 364 grams. So you're talking two grams lighter. Do you notice that difference in the hand? No, you don't. Now, as far as included ear pads, they are the exact same. As you see, they attach magnetic right on the bottom, and then they are fully cloth going all the way around. Incredibly plush, incredibly breathable. And yes, they let a lot of sound in and a lot of sound out. 
Anyway, slap them down there if you don't know the dimensions already. Here you go. But again, they are the exact same as they have always been. And then right down here on the bottom, if you didn't see that, right on the driver, you still have that pad there as well in case your ears touch that. Coming up here to the headband, also that same material and very plush also. So as far as the stock ear cushions, again, they're not bad. They are very cozy, but they really play into that sound profile, which we'll talk about in this sound. But letting a lot of that sound in and a lot of your sound out, that can be a bit of a bummer depending on your environment. Well, luckily, Wicked Cushions, their pads that they make for the A50s, they do fit on, I got them reversed, they do fit on the new ones as well. And as you see, exact same. They got the magnets on the bottom, but here you got the pleather on the outside, pleather on the inside, sports material on top, and also the cooling gel on the inside and the top. So it's going to keep your ears a whole lot cooler. And as you can see here, looking through the FLIR camera, on the right is the stock pad, on the left is the cooling gel from Wicked Cushions. You can see the stock pad is bright yellow going all the way around. And in the middle, over here on the cooling gel, you can see it's distributing that heat a little bit more. It's more orange. And in the middle, it is purple. Of course, it's still going to absorb heat because, heck, everything's going to. But you can see it's just distributing it a whole lot more but it's also going to lock that sound in a lot more which again i'll talk more about in the sound department so no fluff no sponsor here this is just no joke a fantastic upgrade for this headset now as far as adjustability and fit as you see you have that full swivel your ear cups they do go in and out then you got the adjustable arms on that tension rod right on the side the exact same as the older a50s when you take this headset and you put it on my gosh it is Hands down, stinking cozy. I mean, I could game for long sessions with this. I don't have any pressure points, again, because we got that swivel right there, and it's wrapping around whatever head shape you have. If you have one bigger, it'll bow out for you. If you got one that swoops back in the back like me, it'll go back there and seal that off. That's why swivel is so important. But more importantly here, again, with that swivel, these nice soft pads, right in line also with the Wicked Cushions pads if you wear glasses. You're not getting those pressure points on your frame. So it's not pushing me in right there, and it's really wrapping around and closing off that gap. So very good for glasses as well. And as far as build, they are very solid. I mean, you can just twist them up and you really just don't get worried about them. Again, your main hinge down there. So if you drop it like I just did right there, it's not going to be hitting on anything. And again, as you just shake it around, it just moves where it needs to. I go over here talking about my original A50s. I use these quite a bit. And again, they're still intact and very solid. That's the same feel you have over here. Now let's go to talk about features and functions here, and I'm not going to waste your time talking about setup again. We talked about it in the beginning, but I will briefly go over everything we have on the headset. Number one, on your ear cup, you can see you got voice to game, which is slightly clicky buttons there. As you can hear, so you can adjust it to more voice or more game chat. Over here, you have your flip down microphone, flip up to mute. And then on the back of this ear cup with the one with the buttons as well, you have your power switch, which you flick up. You have your cycle, your console cycle, which is again going to do the Xbox, PlayStation or PC. You have your Bluetooth, which yes, it is simultaneous Bluetooth. So you can get your Bluetooth while you're gaming. And then you have your volume wheel. You can also plug it into USB-C to charge as well. But now I want to touch more on the base station here. And you can see there's a whole lot going on. You got Xbox, USB, and HDMI. PlayStation, USB, and HDMI. Well, why, why do you have both of them, you know? And that is quite strange because Logitech states to have both of them. And when you go into the PlayStation's menu, you can choose. Do you want to go in HDMI or do you want to go in USB? And that'll actually play into the sound. I believe it's HDMI, you get 24-bit. With USB, you get 16-bit, if I'm stating that right. Now, going over here to PC, again, you're going to get the 24-bit the going right into there. Why not just have it one way and make it simple? And that's where the older A50s kind of come into play and solve some of that because you have that optical port right there, which can go right in the back of your TV, and you're good to go. They do not include that optical port here, which is a little bit strange. It almost would have simplified things a little bit more, not having to be a pass-through box, really, more or less just an audio box. Kind of an interesting move there. Now, there is one little situation I've ran into with this kind of setup, 
as far as using it across every platform? Well, my console setup with the TV is on this side of the room, then my PC is over on this side of the room, and the wires just wouldn't reach that long, and then number two, you gotta get super long wires. But I think a lot of people, they might have their consoles in, say, the living room, and then their PC in the office or something like that, and that's where you can't really utilize this, you know? So for me, I can use it on PlayStation and Xbox, but not my PC. So that's kind of weird. I kind of wish it was like, I don't know, maybe a wireless dongle over here, and then you can have this just to make it a little bit more convenient because really one way to utilize all of this is either get incredibly long cables or have everything on one desk, which I just don't think many of us are gonna have. Now, one of my favorite features and functions on the new Astros, again, being the Bluetooth, simultaneous Bluetooth, but they also have an app for it now. As you see, you can just dive right in here and you have these options to choose from. Now, whenever it says PC active, which is what we have it on here, so I'm just gonna press the back of it here and slip it over to Xbox, bam, and you can see we're on it now. Now it just switched up here to Xbox, but when you have it in PC mode, it's gonna tell you to get on your PC and actually go into G-Hub and adjust it all in there, but when you're in Xbox or PlayStation, you can come in here and take advantage of this. As you see over here, you have your volume and then your balance, which is again that button we had on the side of the ear cup over here. Over here, you have your microphone side tone, which you can adjust. And over here is which one you're gonna cycle through, which is also that button on the headset. But more importantly, when you tab this little arrow right down here in the bottom, you see you got your microphone, and you're actually sitting here and dabble with an EQ. You got some presets, or you can create, again, your custom EQ for the microphone. But the best one is right down here to the headphones. I know you guys get a little dizzy with it dancing around because it actually goes by itself and as you can see you can get in here you have some preset eqs there it goes it's going to swing back over by itself or you can come over here and i'll try to beat it and it's going to give you a custom eq option which you can save but again y'all have heard me say many times i love these new headsets having app controls like the turtle beaches it's just something i think every headset should have it's so easy and convenient and I love how Logitech did it here. One other thing, touching on the Bluetooth, yes, again, it is simultaneous, so you can hear your music while you're playing through that, but you need the base station connected, so you can't just use this for Bluetooth. As crazy as that sounds like, right now, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the base station, and as you see, I lost connection to the headset. So it's weird, it's like the Bluetooth isn't controlled from the headset, it's controlled from the base station. But as far as features and functions, they did it right. It works, and I love being able to simply press that button and switch over to the next console. You all know I love my uh, Steel Series Nova 7Xs, because right in that dongle, I can flick it to PC or Xbox and use it across every single platform, but I gotta take that dongle out and plug it in. Is that a pain? I don't know, it's maybe a nitpick, right? Convenience and innovation like this is awesome to see. I just love it, and again, it's set up for everything right there. And now you're hearing a microphone on the new Astro A50X. If it sounds a little raspy, obviously that's my voice here just coming off of a cold. But anyways, this is the microphone. Uh, it's about right at two finger lengths from my mouth. If I go on and pull it out a little bit further here, this is what it will sound like. I can see on my graph, it definitely dropped down a little bit. If I pull it back in, this is what it is. I can pull it down a little bit more here as well and see what that sounds like, which is how I like it, because now it's out of my vision. I don't even know the microphone's there. When I have it up here, yeah, I can see it, and then... and flip down to active, as you see. And as you also saw in the app, you can adjust the microphone as far as EQs and presets as well, which you can also do on PC, which I'm in PC mode right now, which is why I can't change them. I'm connected to a Mac, which, by the way, yes, it also works on a Mac, right? Like along with a Switch as well. It's just gotta be in PC mode over here. But this is the default microphone. As far as tweaking it, you can tweak it to your environment. Now let's go ahead and talk about the sound on the Astro A50Xs. And as you see, I have my wiki cushions out here because yes, these pads do change the sound dramatically on this headset for the better in my opinion, but we'll talk about that here. Now at the core of the A50Xs, they're using the new Logitech graphene drivers. They're 40 millimeter over here, frequency 20 to 20. Okay, so we're talking graphene drivers. You might be thinking the new Logitech G Pro X2. They use the graphene. This is where they first introduced them here but these guys are packing 50 millimeter drivers. We'll, we'll talk about that in another video. 
But again, if you're familiar with that sound, you kind of have that here, but you got 40 millimeter drivers. So this is a little bit more full talking compared to those uh, Logitechs being 50 millimeters. It's so weird calling those the Logitechs and these the Astros. It just boggles my mind like many of you guys, you know? But anyways, the 40 millimeter drivers, it is a little more full. It's a little bit more of that immersive sound. You got some of that body. And when you dabble with the app and get into an EQ adjustment, whenever you start pulling it up into that bass, it doesn't become thumpy per se, but it becomes a little bit more warm, a little more full. You kind of got that full environmental sound, you know? Now, flipping that around, whenever you slap your Wicked cushions on, this is what's cool, because it's gonna lock that in a little bit more. This doesn't let a lot of that bass breathe out of there, not really hold it in. But when you put these on, it holds it in there, and it does become a little bit more thumpy. It's not muddy by any means. So that warm sounds not just, you know, girdling everything out of there. You're still getting those nice details of the environment. You're getting a nice dialogue. You're hearing the weapon reloads or anything like that. And as far as footsteps, that's something I want to touch on. I've been playing a lot of Fortnite lately. And man, the, the combination right here of the environment and then the footsteps, like I heard them on a dime playing the new Fortnite season. I mean, it was just like spot on. I'm like, all right, yo, he's outside this room and around the corner, bam, and I went and got it. Now that's with me using my Wicked Cushions, of course, over here, again, that let it kind of breathe out a little bit more than I would prefer. That kind of held in the sounds right here. But I honestly would say, as far as a story game, me playing Diablo, a whole lot of monsters and everything, just chaos going on. I got the sound I wanted if I didn't try to pull out too much bass. Once you start trying to pull out too much bass, I think you're really going to lose it. So again, get yourself some highs in there, make the bass, maybe drop the mids a little bit even. That's what I like doing is dropping the mids a little bit, and then you can really use this headset across any game genre, and it is phenomenal. It's exciting, it's fun, it's full, it's sharp, it's just a great sound. Now, one other thing I want to touch on as far as sound, and I told myself I'm not going to make this video a bunch of comparisons. I will do the comparisons followed up from this video. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell because I will be covering them all. But I want to touch on the new A50s compared to the old A50s using 40 millimeter drivers, just your basic kind that are just moving through there. You kind of had that more, I don't want to say muddy, but again, that bassy full where the bass would overtake your highs type of sound over here. Over here with the graphene being a little bit sharper, a little more stiffer, delivering all those sounds that you really want. That crisp sound is what you're getting here. Over here, again, you're kind of getting that, I hate saying this, but the gamer sound, you know, it's a little bit fuller. Those drivers are just really beating in your ears and just sitting in there vibrating. Over here, they can hit and do what they need to do. That's where you're getting that bass, but it's not a constant bass. It's a bass when it needs to be, but you still get that immersion and you're still getting very crispy highs. What you're getting over here, over here, it's kind of like everything's right here trying to like, nah, let me come into play. Let me come into play. That's what you're getting with these. Over here, you're getting a definitely more true, what I say, a more mature sound. It's just a clearer, crisper sound that's going to suit you across any games. When over here, you're going to be like, man, this is good for this and not good for that. So after looking over this headset, it's almost perfect. I honestly didn't have one single gripe, but I do right here being the MSRP coming in at $380. This is the most expensive headset. It's more expensive than the Nova Pros, more expensive than the Maxwell's, more expensive than Logitech's own G Pro X2. Those are all high priced headsets, but this is still more expensive. For what? The base station, AKA the high speed pass through being 4K and then also 120 Hertz. Just go yourself, go to Amazon or Best Buy and type in 4K HDMI pass through. They are not cheap, especially being 120 hertz and then 4K here. This is the majority of our cost. If you can utilize this, cycling through every single platform, I think you're gonna love it. I loved it, it was phenomenal. But what I wanna see from Logitech and Astro is them come out with a dumbed down version. Come out with this headset without the pass through. Okay, just Xbox and just PlayStation, whatever it may be, and make it 200 bucks or 
make us pay the astro tax and make it 250 bucks if you must right here at 380 bucks can i recommend it no i can't because you're going to be the only one that can justify it this thing's expensive and the one way you're going to utilize it and really get your bang for every buck is if you can cycle through every single one of those platforms so there we go the brand new astro a50 x's i hope i was able to help you out in this video and i hope you enjoyed it if you did please hit that thumbs up don't forget to subscribe because again we have a lot of comparisons coming up on this headset. I'll be answering all those questions for you. So hit that notification bell as well. And I hope I see you there. Bye now.